very deep, uh, played often at social functions. This is not quite one yet, but nonetheless, it, it's supposed to be a lighter piece. Um, uh, monoplus and non-determinism, what's the story? Um, in Haskell, we have this type class, monoplus, um, which is meant to be an abstraction of not just any old notion of effectful computation, but specifically uh, an abstraction of notions of non-deterministic computations. So with two member functions, M0 and plus. Uh, but what should the laws be? And if you check Haskell mailing lists, etc., now and then the question pops up, and then it's ans uh, asked and answered. There is controversial answers. Um, there is a suggestion for reforming Mona Plus, breaking it down into, uh, into a whole class hierarchy. There is discussions around Mona Plus versus alternative, etc. I'm not going to touch on all of this, but, but this is the topic. So typical suggestions include uh, things saying essentially that um, M plus uh, is associative and M0 is, is, is a unit for it. And then there is this thing uh, which looks like an absorption law. There is some sort of a distributivity law, which here looks as if um, um, we have left distributivity. Um, and then people also suggest distributivity from other directions. There is something called the left catch law which uh, is good for the maybe monad, but, 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 but uh, falsified by the list monad. The list monad also uh, refutes this one. So it's, it's a bit of a mess. Um, so what do I do? Uh, I just want to look at the problem and propose some general principles for choosing the axioms, in, in particular in this situation, but in general in situations like this overall. And I want to follow uh, Plotkin and Powers algebraic operations or algebraic theories approach. Um, so in particular, I will look at monads, what I call monads of semigroups and monads of monoids, but also monads of special classes of semigroups and special, class, uh, special classes of monoids. Um, um, yes. What is a monad of semigroups? Um, it is supposed to be a monad, but then there is some extra stuff. Essentially, what it says is that um, the monad, if you look at its underlying functor, this is also a monoid, not with respect to the composition structure of the category of the functors, but also with respect to the product structure. So, so you say there is this natural transformation from t cross t to t, and it has to satisfy a law which looks like associativity. It is exactly associativity, um, um, but stated then uh, not on the level of a single object, but on the level of a functor. Um, and, and notice that we here use that the functor category uh, has this product, monoidal structure, and, and, and all we are saying is that this thing is, is a monoid in this, in this monoidal category. Uh, so uh, this corresponds to what in Haskell was, was written like this. So that part is clear. Um, I also want to say something else. I want to uh, state another law, which as a diagram looks like this, but uh, without the types looks like this. And that corresponds to, uh, to distributivity in this form, which says if you've got two non-deterministic computations, they've been uh, joined together using this M plus uh, operation of the monoplus plus class. And, and this is bound together um, with some function taking values to computations. You can, you can do the binds uh, individually and then combine the results together with M plus. So this is a form of distributivity. Um, now the question of whether this is a right or left <laughs> distributivity law depends on what you put on the left and right. <laughs> so here in this notation, it comes out as the right distributivity of mu over plus. So there are immediately a few observations to make that if you buy this definition that the monad of semigroups is a monad plus a natural transformation like this, plus two laws, then a monad of semigroups delivers semigroups, whatever x you take, the pair of t of x, the type of computations, 
And then the operation instantiated at X is a semigroup, simply because this was uh, the semigroup law. Uh, uh, and this was stated on the level of functor, but, but, but product is pointwise, so this is exactly what it says. Um, where does this other guy come from? This looks a bit more arbitrary, and this is one of the distributivities. The other one is, for some reason, not here. Um, there are several ways to motivate it, motivate it, and this is exactly what I'm going to do. Um, one of the possible motivations is, or the possible ways of, of taking these laws together into some abstract nonsense, justifying it, would be to say that when a monad is nothing but a monoid uh, in the category of endofunctors with respect to the composition monoidal structure, here a mono, mo, monad of semigroups is also something. It is a right near semi-ring uh, without additive unit so far in what I would call a right near semi-ringy category. So, and the category is given by, by the end of functor category and there are two monoidal structures on it. One is the product monoidal structure, one at times, and the other one is the composition monoidal structure, the identity functor and composition of functors. And these two have to uh, work together with each other in a certain way before these two things can even be stated, these, these two laws here. And this is what I call uh, um, the category being right near semi-ring-ish. Uh, it is a similar situation as, as with monads. So to be able to say that the monad is a monoid, you need first that the category of endofunctors is monoidal. Without that, you cannot even state officially what it means. So what are some examples of monads of, of semi-groups? Well, the non-empty list monad is, this is maybe the the, the most common one that you may, might want to use to describe non-determinism in a situation where you do not care, you want to make unobservable the temporal order of choices that are made in a non-deterministic computation. But the, the order of outcomes from a non-deterministic computation, um, from left to right, so to say, the spatial order is still observable. So it's non-empty lists versus non-empty multisets or non-empty uh, um, subsets. Uh, of the underlying set. So this is one possible example, but of course all these quotients like non-empty finite multiset, where you do not anymore see the order of the outcomes, but you see the multiplicity or the non-empty finite power set, where also you do not have the multiplicity information anymore, these are examples. But there are other examples as well, because who says that only the semigroup structure has to be there, there may be other operations that might be around, for example, um, we can throw in, um, uh, we can speak about the list monad here. It's, it's entirely okay if the nullary choice is also possible, even though this is not explicitly required, etc. And what is a typical non-example? This, this is the least abstracted, probably, representation of the idea of non-determinism. The leaf labeled binary tree monad. So it's about making binary choices. But after you've made binary choices in your computation, everything is observable, including the temporal order in which binary choices were made, and the sort of left to right order of the total order of the outcomes. So why am I doing this, and why, why do I claim that this sort of axiomatization is meaningful and canonical, corresponding to uh, essentially taking this axiom and this axiom, uh, and possibly adding uh, these two here and this as well, in case we want to also add nullary choice or the possibility of, you know, getting stuck. Um, uh, I'd like to argue that monads of semigroups are canonical in a number of significant ways, namely their categories of algebras have some very neat properties, their Claisley categories have some very neat properties, and also the initial monad of semigroups has some very special properties. So this is what I want to stress. Uh, this definition makes sense because it gives you nice properties for the Claisley category, nice properties for the algebras category, and nice properties for the initial, mon initial special monad of this sort. And also, they are right in the sense that they fit, per fit the purpose of abstracting notions of associated non-determinism, so far without the no-option choice, which I'll add later. So I'd like to now explain these nice properties that come around with this definition. Um, so, if you've got a monad of semigroups, T and O plus, then it, one of the niceties is that its algebras, the algebras of the monad, they are semigroups. 
And if you don't know what algebras of a monad are, they are roughly handlers. Handlers is a nice name for algebras. They are exactly handlers, if you wish, yes. So officially what it means that algebras of a monad of semigroups are semigroups means that there is a functor that takes you from the <coughs> category of algebras to the category of semigroups over the underlying category, preserving carriers. And then you, you can make it because given any algebra, A alpha, A for the carrier, uh, alpha for the structure map, I can make a semigroup out of it very simply. How do I do it? So this is how the algebra structure is supposed to look like. What do I do? It's going to be this threefold composite. I start off with in A cross A. I apply the unit of the monad to, uh, to these both A's. I land in TA cross TA. That's good because now I can use the A component of O plus. And then I just use the given algebra structure alpha. And I've gone from A cross A to A, which was meant to be, um, uh, which is what, what, what an algebra structure has to be like, and it also satisfies the right laws. So, so this is one of the nice properties. Algebras of a monad of semigroups are semigroups. But also, the opposite of this statement here is true. Namely, if you've got any old monad, from the beginning, let's do not... Do, we don't assume that it's a monad of semigroups. Any old monad, but we found out that its algebras are semigroups in the sense that it comes with the functor f as above. Then it turns out it is a monad of semigroups. How? Well, all I need to do is to figure out how to define O plus, this extra operation O plus on this monad. And all you need to do is to simply look at what f the functor gives for free algebras of the monad. And then it turns out that this correspondence is a bijection. There is a corres bijective correspondence between, on one hand, the semigroup structures on a monad, and on the other hand, uh, these functors f like this. So this is the canonicity on the level of algebras. Yes? Can you go back then, please? Yeah. Where? Another one? Yeah. So is what you're saying is, is that if all my algebras are semigroups, then how do you get the right equations? I mean, I can see this one here? Yes. It essentially comes from the fact that uh, not only are all algebra semigroups, but this thing really is a functor. So it comes from the functoriality of that guy. Uh, well, we, I, I think we can check it offline, but okay. this is how it is. Uh, this is really necessary. Uh, what about the Kleisley category? The Kleisley category is the one in which computations actually happen, where the effectful computations are. As soon as the Kleisley category of, uh, as soon as your monad is a monad of semigroups, so there is this extra operation O plus, the polymorphic one, then this immediately induces that all home sets of the Kleisley category, so these are sets of effectual functions between X and Y. Yeah? In other words, maps in the sense of the base category from X to T of Y. <coughs> So all these home sets, they also carry a semigroup structure. So the semigroup structure is lifted from objects to Kleisley maps. And that's easy to see that you can do, because if you've got two Kleisley maps like this, I can put them together by pairing the Kleisley maps and then using my O plus, uh, the, the Y component of it. And I get something that goes from X to TY. So there are things that are nice about it, and there are things that are not so nice about it. As soon as you start to get some specific structure on home sets, you wonder if you've got enrichment. And this doesn't quite yet happen here. You get one half of it. So because I only have one-sided distributivity, we, we get a distributive law like this, so, which is essentially the one that you would write down in a, for, for the Haskell formulation of it in terms of binds, which says, if you've got two non-deterministic computations, you've combined them together, and this is followed by another one, you could first have, first have done the sequential compositions and then the combination. But um, a similar equation from, which is distributivity from the other direction, this fails in general. And this is already what happens with the list moment. Um, now you might want to ask, ah, oh, this is not perfect, why don't, we, why don't we insist on that one? And that can be done by adding an equation to what I've called monads of semigroups. Uh, but the downside is that then the nice, 
nicety about uh, the canonicity of the, of the category of algebras uh, is, is destroyed. So this is something one has to keep in mind. But actually, people have looked at this. So there is a stronger axiomatization of, um, um, of monads of semigroups with extra axioms, uh, which, which gives you enrichment. And this is studied under the name of additive monads by Komans, Jacobs, and, uh, and also um, Koncharov, Schroeder, uh, Mosakovsky. Makes sometimes sense. So for the least monad, you do not have it. But for the non-empty power set, already you do. What about the initial monad of semigroups? The initial monad of semigroups is very special because it's the free semigroup delivering monad. So given any set or in any object in general, you get back the free semigroup on this set of generators. So in particular, in the category of sets, that would be the non-empty list monad. Um, and why you get there is essentially because normal form leaf-labeled binary trees with respect to associativity are exactly non-empty lists. Because given any leaf-labeled binary tree, so a general term uh, formed uh, with the help of one binary operation and some variables, you can always use associativity, push all the parentheses to the right, and you get, um, uh, you get, uh, you get the right-leaning uh, thin tree, which is the same thing as a non-empty list. Um, and what happens to this functor that I looked at before, which took the category of algebras and uh, went from there to the category of semigroups. Previously, um, we had a functor. Now this functor becomes an isomorphism. So uh, any semigroup is there in the Eilenberg-Moore category of the initial monad of semigroups. And that's also easy to see. Why? Because now the monad is initial. Uh, so, so if someone gives me any semigroup, uh, so on carrier A and, uh, uh, and semigroup operation, this box plus, then how do I work out uh, uh, the monad algebra structure? Uh, is easy because you can use uh, the unique semigroup morphism from the free semigroup uh, to the given one. Um, one could play this game more, of course. So uh, in, uh, in Haskell, we want to work with strong monads. Um, in general, often one wants to do that if you want to give semantics for the lambda calculus for some uh, extension with effects. That's perfectly possible. You only have to add one more axiom, which also says that there is some sort of distributivity between the semigroup operation and then the strength. Uh, um, and in the case of sets, and maybe Haskell, you don't notice it because every monad of semigroups is, is uniquely strong anyhow. Um, then uh, you can play this game more. Uh, it's the same idea as uh, basically if you've got some equations and operations you want to add, add the operations on the level of endo functors. Uh, write down the equations on the level of endo functors, point-wise. Add uh, one-sided distributivity with respect to the multiplication. And you get similar things. So for example, we might want to add nullary choice, um, so, uh, which says there is a way to see basically getting stuck as an official computation. You write down the laws. You get, the monad of mo you get monads of monoids, and they have very similar properties to those of monads of semigroups. So again, the Kleisley categories are spe specific. Algebra categories are specific. And the, uh, the initial special type of monad will deliver you the free monoids. And then in set, the initial monad is, uh, is the list monad here in this case, not just the non-empty list. Uh, here I wanted to show that, of course, you can do more, and I show some some, some simple examples uh, that you know well, and then maybe some exotic examples. So one, one, one basic idea about uh, non-determinism is maybe you don't want to see the order of outcomes. So the action for this is commutativity. You can write it down <coughs> on the level of enter functors. Here I'm just saying, well, yeah, I'm uh, ex uh, swapping the order of the two arguments. And uh, in each case, I do plus. So this is exactly that equation. 
The initial monad of commutative semigroups, it delivers free commutative semigroups. And in sets, we know what it is. It's the finite non-empty multiset monad. Um, maybe I want to do idempotence. So I start off uh, with a monad of semigroups, or maybe with a monad of commutative semigroups. I add idempotence, which is this axiom. Uh, and you could then talk about monads of bands. So these are exactly those monads whose algebras are bands. The initial monad of bands delivers free bands. So they are the, uh, in set, the initial monad is the square-free non-empty list monad, which means the monad of those non-empty lists where you cannot have the same sublist um, with two occurrences twice in a row. Um, this is a very standard thing in semi-group theory. Um, here it might look a bit odd, yeah? <laughs> but uh, you might ask, yeah, why? Why isn't it maybe more sensible would be if I cannot have the same sublist anywhere in a list, yeah? Why, why, why is it twice in a row? But this is because I'm only able to, um, to, um, to crunch two, together two adjacent um, uh, subterms, I mean, two subterms that are directly added together. And if they are far apart, since I do not have commutativity, there is nothing I can do so far. Um, but if, of course, commutativity is around, then, then you can do more, right? And then you get a non-empty finite power set moment. Um, there, are, there are more exotic designs. So, um, so this is one axiom that you sometimes do in semi-group theory but it also makes sense in the case of non-determinism, maybe, maybe parsers sometimes. So what does it say? It says C plus uh, C prime plus C double prime, and now it's the same as C plus, the same C, but the order of the other two is, is swapped. So it says you can swap the order, but in, in, in the case where there is some left context, sorry, left context. Um, so this is called right commutativity, and you can consider monads of semigroups satisfying this property. You might wonder <coughs> what the initial special monad of this type is in the case of sets. And it's quite reasonable. It's going to be T of X is X cross the finite multiset of X, which means in a non-deterministic computation, the abstraction level is you always want to know what the leftmost outcome was with regard, with regard to, the, to the rest of the outcomes in the computation. You can see much less. You can only see which outcomes there were and what their multiplicity was, but you, you, you can't recover the order anymore. And this is, this is a perfectly good monad. You can, you, can, you, you can even manually figure out that you can define multiplication here and, well, the unit is obvious, right? It's the, it's the case where you go to the left and the multiset is empty. Um, and, and that works perfectly. So here is another exotic design. Um, we consider monads of bands, bands where idempotent semigroups, and you have this additional axiom that says C plus C prime plus C is the same as C plus C prime. This is now something which allows you to delete multiple occurrences even if there is something in between. Uh, but you're also specific about which occurrence you keep, and here I've chosen to keep the left occurrence. So this axiom is called left regularity in semigroup theory. Uh, if you work out in set, the initial special monad of this type is now non-empty lists that are entirely duplicate-free. One more slide. Um, so this is somehow maybe better than the square-free things. It just means you've got plenty of outcomes coming out of non-deterministic computation. After you've seen the first occurrence of an outcome, you cannot observe if there were more occurrences of this outcome. Um, and here's the last one I want to show of this type. Um, so you take monads of bands, bands were idempotent uh, semigroups, that additionally satisfy an axiom like this. C plus C prime plus C double prime is C plus C double prime. So you can always skip something that is in a sum in the middle of two things. Uh, and the initial monad here is, uh, is, the initial, uh, is the one that delivers initial regular bands. So T0 of X is X cross X. Which means if you've got a non-deterministic computation, you can only observe the leftmost and rightmost outcome, and the rest is always lost in the abstraction. So recipe, to define the class of monads to work with, you choose the intended algebraic operations equation, state them on the level of the underlying functor, 
add distributivity, one-sided distributivity with respect to the multiplication, and to work out the initial special monad, which you often want to do, you see if your algebraic theory has unique normal forms, then the normal, fo normal forms give it. If the normal forms are not unique, then you still have to do some additional quotienting. And this is particularly relevant for non-determinism, uh, then are special semigroups and monoids, but in general you might do what you want. As conclusions, the algebraic theory's viewpoint helps to see and map the spectrum of viable choices regarding the notion of, you know, regarding various notions of special monads you might want to have, so then subclasses of the monad class. And in particular, the type of examples that are considered with monad plus in Haskell notions of associative non-determinism where temporal order of choices is not observable. They are all about either semi-groups or monoids and their special cases. Um, I stop here. Thank you. To, to, to freely add to, uh, to a given yeah, one in some yeah. sense, yes? No, but that should be viable, right? Uh, well, if, if you already know the monad on the level of algebraic theory. 